Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting, another wondrous propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane. A two versus two on a Minsk pocket. Yes, indeed, pocket, not wallet or anything else. We shall be watching Rat Rufa, and now you feel Sophia. <laughs> Laughter added for dramatic effect. Fighting for Germany. Fighting for the third S S Panzer Division Torten Cup of Coating him shall be Ruka Newton, aka Boris Newton, a famous Soviet physicist, less famous outside of so the Soviet Union, due to his idea of having discovered socialist gravity. And Captain Obvious, the most obvious of captains. Two conscripts on the way here, infantry companies going up, doctrines are lightning war, assault support, and mechanized assault. Lots of assault. Lots of tigers, and he immediately chooses lightning war. That Wolfa, assault support, joint operations, and spearhead. <laughs> and Captain Obvious, Gar Motor, mechanized support, counterattack. And Gar Motor, so we can't even check that. I mean, again, we are seeing more increased attitude towards immediately choosing a doctrine from some players. So let's see how these gentlemen do. Immediately a bit of butt wire going on here, but apparently Riot Roofer decides just to move on. And also wiring off here. In fact, a lot of wiring going on from both sides in this matchup, interestingly enough. Co combat engines are quickly pulling back in the face of the Grenadiers and their pressure. More butt wire going up here. Comrades pushing them ahead straight here. A bit of a coup de main attempt on the fuel point up here. Instead, though, Grenadiers are ready to cut off their attempt. More butt wire going up here to prevent any direct advances. Conscripts moving up there, moving up there, moving up there. Empty forger on the way. Third here for Now you feel Sophia. Two gun leader squads, empty forger using up for support. These conscripts are getting an awful lot of lead. And they are not really liking it. As I'm sure you can imagine. Gunnery squad also advancing here, getting ambushed by a conscript squad. Bunny is getting pushed by another conscript squad. Flank about here. Molotov's on the two Gunnery's. Nice Molotov right there. Bit dangerous for now. You feel the fear tracks set up his Gunnery's like that, but ultimately the conscripts are pushed away. Combat is moving up, taking nasty, nasty losses. MP42 having pulled rather far away. Gunnery's now being caught on the open. They need to pull back towards Carl at the same time. They're rather intent on getting that fuel point back before it's too late. Another Molotov up here from Newton. Pioneers for finding a fire support, MG42 standing up. Conscripts immediately finding results in the line of fire of the MG42, aka Hitler's bus saw, Hitler's violin, and so on, so on. Conscripts advancing up the west flank. The right flank clearly, someone. Oh, they might also flank W. I was about to say someone hadn't done a good job wiring off things, now had they, Ivan? The new grenadier squad is ready. How can we help? A nice aggressive Soviet push. Germans are focusing up very heavily on the center, but they are giving up the west and right side of the map. Right, west and east side of the map. In the process, in that sense, they might actually set them up for a bit of a dangerous situation as they could risk a very nasty kind of enlilment. Malt is now on the way here for Rad Rufa. With two MT42s out. And lots more barbed wire. And an awful lot of machine guns covering every conceivable angle. A push here for the fuel point. Special Rav Command immediately being set up here by Captain Obvious. Gunners here need to retreat. They are definitely outnumbered, outgunned, out health. Mega flamethrower. Soon they'll also be out crisped. Very heavy counterattack going here. Three and it is squads. One already upgraded with the lighting machine and gewehr here. Four. Now you feel Sophia. And before two's doing what they can to hold up the Soviet advance. Still here remaining here. Very worried that of course something might appear from here and attack from the angle. And there we go. And before two's pushing back. The combat is combat going up here. For some reason they actually send in the depleted gun. It is not the one with the light machine gun. That seems like quite frankly a bit of an odd choice here by now you feel Sophia. More flanky going on here. Newton here. Perhaps not the world's greatest physicist is definitely a good flanker. And there we go. Getting off a Molotov. Well done, my find. 
Oh, the comrade or whatever. But Corinthians are getting caught on a very serious debt as MD42s. Other one falls for back, opening up for a frontal assault here. Mortaram though puts a bit of a dent in the excitement. Corinthians squad here engaging in an spot with light machine gun, having rushed straight into it. Not really a good idea to charge into light machine guns, in particular when that machine gun has MD42 on it. That thing fired up 1200 bullets a minute. That thing was mean. Of course, it had a few disadvantages, which of course included high ammunition consumption, but a skilled German MG gunner could contain that. And of course, it also had a tendency of rather overheating quickly, but the Germans had figured that out and had another extra set of barrels to fix that out. Scout come making a frontal rush, but at the same time, there are no grenadiers, so this could actually work. Oh. Well, of course, they are MGs covering everything, but still. And there we go. Conscripts hitting the flank. Well done, well done. Nice little flanking assault here from Captain Obvious. Who should be a bit careful there with the scout car. Rushing in, finding away with the 50 caliber and the Flammenwerfer, the flamethrower. Grenadiers moving up, support the light machine gun. MG cleared out. <laughs> Going to need to get that scout car out of there. Oh, too late, got caught here by a small obstruction and Panzerfaust. Scout car kaput. Then he's here getting toasted, got conscripts getting caught here in the light machine gun. Again, always be careful around the light machine gun. Do not underestimate the light machine gun. Though you certainly shouldn't underestimate the model survivor as it can really do a lot of damage as well. More guys here. Now you feel Sophia pushing on with a counter attack. MT secured here. Bit of a nasty engagement here. Though they need to pull back. There is some other nasty stuff nearby. Although there's also now a Soviet mortar up, the 120mm mortar. Also, fun fact about the MG42s, they use the exact same ammo as the German Car 98K rifle, which was there to sort of make things logistically easier. So, little fun fact there. No, not something often mentioned. Mines going up here though from Captain Obvious, lovely, lovely, lovely. Though getting spotted by the Pioneers, less lovely. So, it's snapping out the front line. Lots of night machine guns here for Rad Ufa and the light mechanized company up for now you fear Sophia. So it's making good progress now. They should definitely consider mining up things around here. And here, I think, would be a nice spot. There we go, in fact. Good job there from Captain Obvious. An obvious job, but nonetheless an important one. And just the whistling of mortars as the sky is filled with rounds. A small battery set here by Rat Roofer. Getting lots of kills in there. Absolutely devastating stuff. Shock troopers have around here for Captain Obvious. But already his men are getting shattered. Sniper needs to get out of there before things go sour. Oh dear! Oh dear! They're right in the mine! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Right grenade set off the mine and the flamethrower tank! Oh, the rubbish luck! Yet, I told you standing on mine was bad idea! Anyways, Kranz goes here versus some Panzerians who have arrived from now. You feel Sophia. Quickly getting support by some Grenadiers. Molotovs, mortar rounds. Oh, the pandemonium! Though it rather feels like Captain Obvious might be a bit short in infantry, in fact. I get the impression that the mortars rather slaughtered him a bit. Newton is also looking a bit short on boots on the ground, so the actor needs to sort of do something about that, but otherwise this Germans might actually have a chance of pushing back with superior numbers. Well, these superior amounts of MG. Which again was something the Germans were quite huge proponents of doing. Because it actually worked. MG42. Oh, mortar setting up. 
Looks like he's very fond of doing it in the battery formation, if you could call it that. <coughs> Though it does rather render them very vulnerable to actually getting taken out by a single few mortars around, so that's something he needs to be careful of. Combat in is already veterans in too. I mean, they've really been able to put in a lot of work here for Comrade Stalin, and he's now burning away at them. Popping out to Captain Obvious, who has gone for counter-attack. Oh, Combat in is wiped out. Oh, the Rotten Rock can just look. He's barely got any units left now. And we see here that has Newton has secured himself a T-70 light tank. The sector is at risk. But it looks like the Soviets might have in fact overextended themselves and taken one too many losses in the fight against the fascist foe. In particular, they might have slightly underestimated the grenadiers and the light machine guns. I don't know yet. Looks like a mine went off somewhere. There we go, T-70 moving in. Putting on some pressure on the flank, punishing a few stray fascists. Good job there. And there we go, the flare from the flare mine falling down. Heavily equipped MG42 crew firing away in the name of the motherland. Though they should be careful about the heavy mortars. I hope the heavy mortars actually trying to bombard them. Shock troops well here. Done, Otherwise things are going to get very ugly. Sandbag position going up here. Flank attempt here. But looks like rat roof out the flanks nicely covered. More air reconnaissance. Looks like here Captain Obvious is a huge fan of actually doing some nice reconnaissance. Good job. T-70 moving in. No needs to be killed before the pack has time to react. And a bit of armor here. A flak panzer 4 has arrived for Red Wufa. A second T-70. Fascinating, fascinating. Sniper though, way too close, way too close. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Danny Squad might go down. And there we go. Torch! But the Austin is moving in against the two T-70s. The two T-70s are in a bit of trouble. On the other hand, they might be able to find enough volume to take out the Austin if it is too careful. But not too careful. Now go. In fact, right there, Red Roof overextends it a bit. But at the same time, we have the pack moving up, so he can't flank it. But looks like he tries nonetheless, and that proves to be his undoing. Oh dear. The attempt was nice, but sadly not quite there. Oh, fine, fine, meaning. Oh, so close, so close. Damn so close. And to assault the mortars here, forcing one away. But the other one still remains. Oh my, very close to going off there. Can't go close to the but the gun is. Oh, equipped with the Gewehr 43. German semi-automatic rifle. Well, of choice, besides the SVT-40, if they could ever get their hands on it. Can't go here, getting absolutely shattered. A nice grenade here on the Grenadiers. Conscripts need to get the devil out of there. And looks like another squad got to extend his rather seems to be a bit of a Soviet problem here. From Captain Obvious. He does have a tendency of not quite considering unit preservation in that sense. And he's suffering some rather unfortunate heavy infantry loss. But there we go. Mine almost wiping out a panzer gun in his squad again. Mines make one hell of a difference. And looks like a T-34 is arriving here for Newton. Ooh. Ach. Ow. It looks like the Panzer Gunners did not make it out of that one alive. Pani is also down. T-34 moving in. Pack heels are getting mortared. Another pack arriving up. The third SS fortifying the front line with seal and fervor. A fun hallmark of an SS division activating. Oh, aircraft went down here. Oh, right at the entrance. That could have been drastically painful, but SS divisions usually always had more infantry amongst them. Their battalion the regiments actually always had an infantry battalion more than most regular army divisions. Also, they had more artillery. And that pretty much went up all to 1945, where even then they were beginning to get hit by the manpower shortages. But very fun fact, and it's something that is very very rarely touched upon and certainly I personally believe it is one of the reasons why the SS divisions could always function a bit more fanatically than the others because they could actually afford the losses at a greater length than a regular army division could so very fun little fact there very fun little fact but again not very often mentioned 
not very often mentioned, and I wonder why. Rat Ruger here with a mortar half track. He didn't have festering support, so that must be Spearhead Doctrine. More mortar rounds going in. And time to pull over here to Newton, who has gone for Guard's motor. One Guard's infantry squad out, but he's actually not been able to do much with it. He's got a ton of munitions, though, so good use of marked vehicle could prove advantageous. Mortar here needs to be retreated or merged at the front line, either way. It needs something done. T-34 operating at the far flank. Pax covering to approach here on the west flank. Realizing most of the fat Soviet army is over there. Flak Panzer once more ready. Fresh Panzer Grenadiers. Also, I'm not really seeing much otherwise doctrinal uses here from now. You feel the fear. No tactical movement. No relief infantry. Veterans one up here for the Ostwind. Pioneers here close to getting. The combat is close to getting wiped out. A bit unfortunate. And a nice armored assault here. In fact, the Soviet positions are lacking anti tank defenses. Despite. Having a support weapon company there, there's been no Maxims or field guns out from it, which is actually somewhat odd. Captain Obvious now with an H-85. And I fear that Austin might go down. H-85 gets off a nice hit there. Main gun destroyed. And T-70 down. The enemy has destroyed one of our vehicles. Awaiting command. Gunny is making a push up here. Black machine guns and otherwise car 98 Ks. Soviet still holding on to the majority of the territory. But the Germans are getting increasingly Stubborn and increasingly nasty when they're actually sticking together. Heavy Panzer co op for now, you feel the fear. AT gun has our range! We are losing supplies to the enemy. Ostwind here getting repaired. Bunker the right. Shooting going on. Not one step back. This is Needs to be careful here, though. I think Captain Obby is being a bit dangerous here with the two snipers that close, considering the heavy mortar usage from their opponents. And there we go, already one sniper is down. Careful, Obvious, careful. Oh, there we go. There's a reason you want to be careful with that kind of tactics when your opponent has mortars. Shock troops here being stopped by some very intense machine gun fire. Banker up. Regular machine guns up. And looks like the H-35 might be able to get the motor half tactic on out in their wagon. And there we go, kaput. Also field gun up. We're just seeing the centre getting shelled. And the escort almost down. Oh, the carnage. Second H-35 rolling out. Panzer can fear from Rad Hufa. Lots of action going on here. Most of it in the centre. We are seeing some minor movements on the west flank. Pack up. Grenadiers pushing up the west flank. Panther 4 here barely escapes. A bit of smoke being popped up to obfuscate things. But we are seeing every Connors moving in to quickly make a mockery of that. No, it's actually Mark Vehicle. And it gets shot down. The Ost. Wind Coup is on a roll. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they've heard some kind of bad for shooting down all those aircraft. Oh, another mine hit, another mine. Really great and consistent usage of mines from Newton. Most commendable, most applaudable. The problem, though, for the soap thing is that the meme seems again the high infantry losses suffered, in particular by Obvious, and it's really hampering him. T-34 rushes ahead a bit recklessly, gets caught between two packs. I think that was a bit of a mistaken assault here. T-34 not really that kind of tank, it's not a heavy tank. Panzer 4 men to dodge things. 
Guards infantry moving up. Can they get the Flak Panther? Can the Asian fight get it? No. There we go. Pack opening up. Need to stop. Focus fine. There we go. Abandoned but not dead. Guards infantry coming is could probably do the trick. Asian 5 needs to pull back. Pull back. And drop the focus site for the time being. You need a hasty retreat. There you go. Flak Panther down. Pack could be stolen. Pack could be stolen. That would definitely be a huge gain. And we're seeing a Panther moving up. Panther come back. Film falling out there. Another assault here from Captain Obvious just as the Panther rolls in. And Guardian is going to try and get that. And Titanic on these combats need to retreat. Another bit of Mark Vehicle straight on the Panther. Well done, well done. Exactly the target you want to use Mark Vehicle on with S-25s on the field. And there we go. Caught between two S-25s. This is disastrous. But now you feel the fear. fear. And there we go. Excellently coordinated between the two players. One gets Mark Target down, the other uses the S-85s to quickly wipe them out. Excellent job there. Planeers though clumped up. Excellent target for the grenades. Oh, no. Ach du Lieber. So many good German soldiers died. Really, a lot of things, you know, suddenly changing. Lots of losses. All of a sudden, one player looks strong. One side looks strong. Then all of a sudden, one mistake. The other player punishes extremely hard. And then all of a sudden things have changed again. I do wish though that Fear the Fear would actually use some relief infantry, get some infantry that way, and then push up with some Ostrophen on the right flank. I think that could do a lot to sort of change things there in favour of the Germans. More seriously, a KB-8 tank has arrived, coming a bit under fire here. Should be a bit careful. In particular, there's a veteran with two pack firing away at it. Time for the mid-game analysis, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. The situation is rather 50-50 split in the f on the map, but slightly in favour of the Soviets, are probably more 55-60%. Soviets are doing, able to do a lot of damage, but the main problem seems to be overall infantry losses bringing them down a bit. But now they do have the armoured advantage, they have K1s, they have SU-85s, they've got T-70s, although there's a Panzer IV ready to blow holes into that tiny little tank. So there are definitely some problems on hand here for both sides. For the Germans, they need to build a more sizable armoured force. They also need to protect their remaining pep because that's currently the only thing that's protecting them from getting absolutely overrun by Bolsheviks. That and, well, I suppose all the incredible damage they're able to do to the Soviet infantry. And that's rather one of the major problems for the Soviets. They need infantry. They need lots of infantry. Otherwise, they're going to get absolutely crippled once their tanks are left largely defenseless against German infantry and German anti-tank. And so that's something that needs to be looked into and sorted out as quickly as possible I think otherwise I mean all the armor they have in the world will probably be a bit limited in usage and again that's been the problem throughout the fight they do seem to suffer a bit too many losses some mistakes here some miscalculations there which rather ultimately otherwise you know undermines the otherwise good endeavors with you know, using their doctrines quite nicely that's a bit of a problem for the Germans, there's overall better doctrinal usage except here from you know feel the fear who's pretty much only used the Gewehr 43 once and otherwise not make usage of an otherwise good doctrine. On the other hand, we have now you heavy Panzer Corps and we have the support armor corps. There's a chance for some good armored mix here. And turn another Panther might be an idea, although he should be able to better protect it. And in that case, you know, he might actually be able to do some damage. And of course, the other gentleman with the spearhead could go for the Tiger tank, and that would certainly help them with some heavy armor. And that might able actually to be able to push through. In fact, both of them could go for Tiger tanks, in which case they might be able to push through the remaining infantry and thus the remaining armor with some ease, although of course Mark Vehicle will make things a bit of a headache. And of course another possibility for the Soviets, but actually quite interesting to note, they seem to be both holding on to the victory points. Ah, oh, there we go, for some reason there was a slight there, but we do see that the Soviets do have a victory point advantage. If they could try and keep that up, they might actually be able to win that way, but again, they will need more troops, more boots. But, let us return to the fight. Then he is here suffering nasty loss and certainly infantry is also a problem. I mean right here he should have used his relief infantry. It might have resulted him actually getting us a most from that and there we go. Squad wiped out! Come on! Oh! Oh no! Oh no! Sturmovic shot down and crashed into the KVH! Oh no! What a tragic loss for the motherland! 
I'm pretty sure that pilot is not going to get the Order of Lenin for that. Nice anti-tank grenade there. Conscripts here need to be absolutely ridiculously cautious. Otherwise they're going to get wiped out. Two SCD files remaining, but they both need repairs. Serious repairs, so some combat in this are needed to quickly get the repair before the next wave of German armor arrives and beats the snot out of them. But a rather brutal scene right here on Minsk Pocket. Lots of armored losses of all the kinds, and some serious stents being put into the Soviet Air Force. Lots of Sturmwick simply getting blasted out of the sky like paper aircraft. And another Sturmovic. Good lord, the Soviet Air Force is incredibly active today. Maxim here getting a nice flank on the gun. These conscripts here, they'll need to retreat. Come on, Newton. The new Garton here getting assaulted. A nice assault here. Garton, for some reason, was stopped in there, and that really didn't help them. They need to retreat as well. Newton rather extending what little infantry he has, which is already depleted, which is only to the advantage of the Germans right hand pack, retreating right past Grenadiers with Gewehr 43s. Not really good. A Katusha arriving here for Captain Obvious. Interesting enough, there seems to be no attempt at getting the 600 me or Manpower costing, you know, 152mm howitzer. I think it would be a great job there in shattering the German defences and German units. So why he isn't going forward? I mean, it would seem like the obvious choice. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Yes, I know it's another terrible joke at the cost of that poor bastard's name. I know I'll stop making those awful jokes. He doesn't really deserve it. I know. I know I'm being a bit of an ass, but... Sometimes I just love the bad jokes. I'm sorry. Even I have my weaknesses. Buttoning up here the Panzer IV. Actually, if I hang out at the top here, hitting the Panzer IV. Not only good here, Grenadiers Foster retreats, then attempt at relief infantry. Instead, we actually see another panther instead of a tiger. Fascinatingly enough. Of course, it might work out since it does have higher range and speed than the tiger. Truck troops making advance. Both sides are getting worn down. There goes the fire, something a few shots, few gun also moving up. MP42 quickly circumvented and forced to move the E3. Tiger moving in! Die Tiger is here! SS Schwerer plants up timing Einstein to the Zwei, providing its SS Tigers. Patrus is bombarding everything as well. Though with markedly less success in actually hitting anything. I still would like to see the 152mm how it's up for Captain Obvious, and I would also like to see his tank destroyers repaired. This one in particular needs those repairs before it's too late. And there we go, Veteran D2, but one more shot could take it out, and there we go, he should have repaired. Oh! Oh no! Just as it crashes, Boris, the faithful gunner, fires off one shot and saves, not the day, but at least the honor. Quick grenade here. Does very little. Panther is the following up with a bomb grenade that does considerably more. Panther quickly rolls in. And we're seeing the Panther and it's causing cult full this way, forcing the field guns back. And we're seeing that the weakened flank opens up for the Tiger. An excellent flank here from Rad Rufa. Excellent. Amazing even. He takes a completely unguarded path, completely catches the Soviet force off guard with the Tiger. Excellent! Excellent! That's what you call a proper flank. The one where you're taken up completely unsecured route and hit the enemy completely in the sides where they absolutely 
do not have anything to stop it. Well done, my good sir. We do see a Soviet armor arriving here, two T-3045s, in a desperate attempt here from Newton to stem the tide with Soviet gravity. Kind of is, though, getting caught here by lots of Mac and machine guns and the T-3045s. Not good at all for these kind of ears. And there we go, full retreat here in the face of the Soviet armor. Tiger pulling back, Panther pulling back, Panther though very looked back bad. Field gun recruit by Panzer Grenadiers. Troops here need to pull back before it's too late. Oh no, the shock troopers got wiped out. It's absolute chaos now. Panther might go down. Panther gets veterans you want. Do they have smart beak in which case they should utilize it? And no, we're seeing a ramming attack. But no, it overheats. It was too far away. Too far away. The carnage is unbelievable. T-3045 here in a bit of trouble. Close to going up in a blaze of flames. More Panzer Fausting, and there we go. Tiger scores another kill in the name of Deutschland. Kantika's pushing ahead here, trying to get that. That 21 Panther with a little help left. Heavy mortar still in operation. Right flank now completely collapsing after the Tiger playing. broke the barbed wire. Kantika's rushing hit, but they just need to get out of there. Tiger up, taking care of the heavy mortar. That tiger is on a rampage. And looks like the Soviets have utterly collapsed. Like a poorly made suspension bridge. And now utilizing for the motherland, but I can't help but feel it's too little too late. Despite best intentions, it should have been utilized a lot earlier and with a lot more infantry and support units. Since I do believe it actually also affects up stuff like field guns. So why it now of all times is a bit beyond me. And certainly won't help much against tanks and incredibly veteran grenadiers with semi-automatic rifles. But just so much carnage, so much death. And all of a sudden, Rad Roofer just has so many grenadiers, but none of them really veteran, which also rather gives an indication that this gentleman might be following more the SS Credo of, you know, the word the total of Credo, but, well, you know, casualties happens. Lots of flame flamethrowers here. Conscripts caught here and getting massacred. It is pretty much now just a slaughter of Soviet soldiers, which well, I suppose happened at the actual point. Desperate attempt here for the victory points. Desperate play. Desperate play. And I'm also pretty sure that's the only reason the Soviets are still in the game. It's those victory points. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure they would have called it quits if they weren't that damn close. Chance here for Rat Roofer to call in a second Tiger. Just going to speed things up a bit here. With the fall of those points, and yeah, well, that second time I'm pretty sure it's game over. Another for the Mullen. I mean, all of a sudden he's using it a lot. Why now all the times? Shock troopers with for the Mullen up here. The nades being exchanged. And there we go, game over. A complete disaster here for the Soviet Union, for the motherland. So after this brutal engagement, I mean, what could we learn here? I mean, the Soviets, the problems was a bit, you know, partly their, their infantry preservation was rather problematic. They suffered rather huge losses and in some cases didn't do much actually up hope, sort of fixed them. Also a bit of problem, you know, using some of the abilities. S-85s were not really 
kept as well in condition as they could have been, which I think was a definite problem. They lost, you know, one that could have been really good at veterans. Two, rather quick loan from failing to repair, and that was definitely one, I think, one of the major problems. Poor armor maintenance. That hurt them. I also think it was a huge mistake here for Captain Obvious not to use the B2 152mm howitzer. That could, or B4, whatever, by the way, that one could have absolutely punish the Germans in such a manner, it would have really been hard for them to push forwards as well. So I'm a bit surprised that did not see any usage at all whatsoever. Newton here certainly did well, he could have, you know, perhaps had a bit more luck with his marked vehicles, his T-3045 there yeah, was, he should have perhaps tried to go for the Panther first, or at least tried to sort of get behind the Tiger instead. Right Rufo though, mate, really got to use his Tiger again, that assault right here, uh, heading up the flank, absolutely collapsing the third line was brilliant. Certainly great stuff, most commendable. I will say I'm a bit disappointed now, you feel the fear, he pretty much used only one ability out of the Doctrine, otherwise good Doctrine, so I'm rather disappointed in him over that. Rather disappointed. Conversely, I mean, Rat Roof will make much better use of his Doctrine, on the other hand. So there are some problems then also, now you feel the fear, also had some serious problems with unit preservation, he didn't even use, you know, Relief Infants, which is always just some things, you know, rather try and keep that a bit in check. So there was also some disappointing play on the German side, but oh, you know, rather exciting fight, really some brutal action, lots of aggressive action, lots of flanking early on, I mean, some really good, nice aggressive flanks, but not quite anything to really support it overall, which rather made it some reckless flanks instead, so there's a fine line there to sort of balance. But also, great mine uses, I mean, really great mine uses, that really gave them a really edge against the German for a long part of the game. And, you know, had they been able to keep the HD files and the infantry a bit live a bit better, they would have won this. I mean, they were really close to winning. So, again, had they used all those things a bit better and also that beef 4, they would have won. No doubt about it. So, this was a really close match in many senses. But, again, they rather ended up crippling themselves in the long run. So, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned a thing or two or three. If you did, why not subscribe to your friends? If you didn't, well, why not simply play and provide some feedback in the comments? This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.